Um, so the topic that we go to talk about in this group is um, children in family care and how the children's bill supports family care. Now the rights that we are talking about here are children's rights to family care or parental care. And our constitution is very um, unique and interesting in the world in that when they were drafting it, the drafters realized that a lot of South Africa's children don't live with their parents. They live with extended family. And that this form of family needs to be recognized and supported and strengthened. So that's why our constitution says family care or parental care. And our constitution doesn't assume that it's better to be with your parent or better to be with your family, your extended family. It simply says that both forms of care are good for children. So you can either be living with your granny or your aunt or with your mom or your dad or your mom and dad or your mom and your mom or your dad and your dad or your mom and your aunt or, you know, there's in South Africa, there's a lot of different um, family care arrangements and the constitution says that all of those are good and acceptable and that laws should recognize and support those families to care for their children. Then the next right is the right to alternative care when you are removed from the family environment. So this is when the, um, your family environment is not good for you. So someone in your family is abusing or neglecting you or someone in your family has an alcohol problem and, this, and that is causing harm to you um, or you don't have a family um, because your, your family have all died or um, they have abandoned you. Okay, then the constitution says the state, which is the government, is obliged to step in and provide you with an alternative place of care. And we'll talk about what those different alternatives could be when, when we get to the next slide. Another right which is affected by these discussions is um, the right of every child to a social grant if their caregiver is unable to support them. So in South Africa, we have very high rates of poverty and many people therefore have to rely on social grants to feed their families. And our constitution protects this right. So any caregiver, whether it's your granny or your aunt or your mom or your dad, they have a right to get a social grant so that they have enough money to um, buy food um, or um, your basic necessities. Then the next right is that children have the right to social services if they or their caregiver need help. So for example, if you're living with your granny and your granny's quite old and you are very young and you don't understand each other and you're fighting a lot because your granny doesn't understand young people and you as a young person don't understand your granny. Um, you might need help from a child and youth care worker or a social worker or a counsellor to come and help you and your granny understand each other better and not to fight so much. Or you might have lost your mom or dad, they died and you need counselling um, because you're feeling grief stricken and are very sad. Then the state is supposed to provide counselling for you and your caregiver. So those are social services. And the Bill of Rights says that you have a right to those. Then if someone in your family is abusing or neglecting you, then you have a right to be protected by the state. So either the state has to take that person out of your house and they must either go to jail or move somewhere else so that you are safe. And that's the best option so that you can stay there with your other caregivers. Or the state needs to provide a safe place for you to go to. Okay, so... Um, those are the rights we're talking about. Then what's also important to think about in this debate is the difference between family and parental care or alternative care. So if you are living in family care or, or with your parents, um, you either with, with biological parents or one of them, or you're with both your adoptive parents or one of them, or you're living with extended family. 
this, the government has an obligation to support your caregiver to care for you. So they have an obligation to, for instance, give grants to your caregiver and to provide parenting programs or counseling if your family needs it. And all families are entitled to that. It doesn't matter whether you um, have been orphaned or abandoned by your parents and are living with your granny, or if you um, are not an orphan and are living with your parents. All families, it doesn't matter who your caregiver is, are entitled to grants from the state and social support services. Then the other type of care is alternative care. And this only happens if there's a court order. Okay, and it's quite important to remember that because often in South Africa, people get confused and they think that if you're living with your granny, it is alternative care. It's only alternative care if you've got a court order placing you in the care of your granny. Um, because alternative care is a state, a form of state care. So if the state places you in the care of your granny, you remain a ward of the state. So the state is responsible for your care and your granny is providing it on behalf of the state. So you'll be placed in alternative care if um, your parents or your caregivers are abusing or neglecting you, and you or you don't have a caregiver. And there are three forms of alternative care in South Africa. is temporary safe care, which is um, normally only for six months, and it's supposed to be a quick emergency response if you're not safe at home. And then there's foster care, which is the best form of alternative care because it it has it's in a family environment and that is where the state should focus its its resources and programs on and then you get child and youth Sorry, care centers which is residential Sorry, care. Uh, yes. Olga can you assist Nomsa what, what sound because she needs to interpret she needs to hear the sound Olga Hello. Okay, I will contact her privately. We'll do that. Okay, great. You can continue, Paula. Okay, then a child and youth care centre is a residential centre, and many of them are structured into units that, that try really hard to provide a family-like environment um, for children. So those are the three types. Um, and many of you on the call have probably experienced um, you know, one or two of those. And in this alternative care setting, you, your care is supposed to be supervised by a social worker. And the social worker is supposed to work with your family. So if you've been removed because your, your parents were abusing you, they're supposed to work with your parents to try and um, solve the reasons why they were abusing you and make it safe for you to return home or they need to work at finding you a permanent care placement and making you a care plan. And in alternative care, your placement is supposed to be reviewed every two years by the children's court and by a social worker. So you can see that the two forms of care are quite different. And they're different rules in the Children's Act for these types of care. The challenge that South Africa has been facing is that we, because our government responded very late to the HIV pandemic, we, we had a large number of orphans, so children whose parents died from HIV, and those orphans needed support from the state. And the, the state decided to use the foster care grant as the grant of choice. And they encouraged grannies and aunts to take the orphans in and then they would give them the higher grant. At the height of the HIV pandemic, we had about 1.5 million orphaned and abandoned children who needed foster care. Today, because the orphaning numbers have gone down because we've now got better HIV treatment for pregnant moms and babies, we have approximately 660,000 children who've been orphaned um, by the death of both their parents or one parent has died and the other has abandoned them. About 80% of these 660,000 children live with family members such as grannies and aunts. So some of them 
um, are in child and youth care centres or in foster care with strangers, but the majority are actually living with family members such as grannies and aunts. Now, the, the problem is that 50% are in, are in court-ordered foster care and they get the foster care grant of 1,040 rand per month. The other 50% are living informally with a family member, granny or aunt, and they are receiving a child support grant of 450 rand per month, or they're not getting a grant at all. And now the reasons why the foster care grant is only reaching 50% of these children who often are abandoned and are living with family is that the foster care system was not designed to support such a large number of children. It was designed for about 100,000 children and particularly children who need state supervision and care because they are being abused or neglected or they don't have anyone to care for them. And this is why your foster care system is such a strict system with many rules because it's aimed at ensuring that the child is protected from, protected from further harm and that their care plan is reviewed every two years. It was not designed to support um, to provide support for large numbers of children who are actually safely in the care of their family members. So what happened is that in 2011, when there were almost 550,000 children in foster care, a lot of these children started losing their grants. So SASA just stopped paying them. There were about 120,000 children whose grants just stopped being paid, and there were a further 300,000 who were at risk of their grants being stopped. And the reason was that the social workers and the courts couldn't keep up with renewing the grants every two years. They had to, I mean, renewing the court orders. And if they didn't renew the court orders, then the grants would stop. So the High Court ordered the Department of Social Development to design a comprehensive legal solution that would ensure that children in the care of family could get an adequate grant. Um, and that they didn't necessarily need social workers and courts to get that. So then since 2011, the department and civil society have been thinking and discussing and planning what could be a solution that provided a more accessible um, grant and services to family members caring for orphaned and abandoned children. And the solution they came up with was um, had to be put into two different laws. So the Social Assistance Amendment Bill, that one has just been passed by Parliament, and that's the bill which regulates social grants. And this one says, seen as 50% of these children living with grannies and aunts are already on the child support grant, why don't we give them a top up? So give them some additional money on top of that small child support grant. So this is where the idea of the child support grant top up came in. So the idea was that these children would get the 450 plus 225 and they would end up with 675. And that would replace the use of the foster care grant for orphaned and abandoned children in the care of relatives. So what you can see here is that this new grant is lower than the foster care grant. So the foster care grant is a thousand rand and this new grant would be about 675 rand. But the positive side of the grant is that it's easier and faster to access because the family goes directly to SASA. They don't have to first go to a social worker in a court. And SASA can take um, between a month and six months to process it, whereas at the moment the social workers and courts are taking up to two years to process a foster care placement. So families will get this grant much more quickly. And then also it won't stop every two years, but will remain in payment until the age of 18 and no social workers or courts will be required to access it. Then the second part of the solution is the Children's Amendment Bill. And here the bill proposes that children who are orphaned or abandoned and are in the care of a family member, that these are not children in need of state supervision of their care and protection. It doesn't mean they don't need support. These families still need support in the form of social services and a grant they don't need to be supervised by a social worker. What the social worker or the court should do, if they come across a child, they should refer them to SASA to get the CSG top up and provide them with prevention services or refer them to another organization that can. 
The other amendment, the children's amendment brings in is it allows family members like grannies or aunts to go to the children's court to get a guardianship order. So I'll go through these in a little bit more detail. It's just like three more slides left. So um, the amendment bill in section one defines when a child is considered to be abandoned or orphaned. Now the definition of orphan has, is going to change slightly to clearly include children who have lost only one parent. So some social workers and courts have been interpreting the current definition as saying that it must be proved that the child has lost both parents. And this has been a problem for some children because in South Africa, many children don't have a present or involved father. And so it's not possible to actually prove that the father has died um, because the family doesn't know the father or they can't find him. So that's why they wanted to make it easier for what you call single orphans to also be considered orphans and then benefit from the provisions of the act. Then section 24 and 45 determine which court can help a family member obtain legal guardianship. A legal guardianship is really important for grannies and aunts to have. Um, otherwise they can't protect the legal inheritance. So for instance, if someone's parent dies and leaves a pension or a life policy, um, the, the granny can't help that child to claim or administer that because she doesn't have the right to help the child with that um, inheritance. She would first need to get a guardianship order from the children's court. Now in the past, um, or actually currently now, you can only get guardianship from the high court. And the high court is far away from many people and it's expensive because you need to hire an expensive lawyer. Um, so the idea now is that um, the guardianship applications will be available at the children's court, which is at magistrate's court level. And it's much easier to access because there's a clerk at the children's court who can assist grannies with the necessary forms and refer them to the necessary support um, processes. So this should hopefully ensure that grannies and aunts have the necessary piece of paper that to protect the child's property interests. And for instance, a granny or an aunt can't consent to a child's, um, to an operation on a child under 12, um, because only a guardian can. So that will, for instance, assist the guardian, I mean, the grannies with um, when they go take the child to hospital for an operation. Then section 151A to I of the, children, of the Children's Act defines when a child will be considered by social workers in the courts to be in need of state supervised care and protection. So this is when the state must intervene in the child's family because there's something um, going on in the family that's not good for the child. And section 151A has been changed to say that not all orphaned or abandoned children who are living with family need a social worker in a court. Um, if they are, if they have a suitable or able parent, caregiver, family member or guardian to care for them, then they don't need a social worker or court to intervene in their care arrangement. It's only if they don't have a caregiver, then the state needs to intervene. Okay, then um, the last amendment is section 186.2, which allows the court, the children's court to place children in foster care with relatives until the child reaches the age of 18. And this is because there are about 300,000 orphaned or abandoned children who are already in court-ordered foster care with family members. So while this won't be an option anymore for orphaned or abandoned children living with family, we want to ensure that these 300,000 who are already there stay there and don't lose their foster care grants. So um, that, this clause is aimed at that. So the next time these cases go back to the magistrate's court, the magistrate will be encouraged to uh, extend the order until they're 18. And then they don't have to come back to court every two years to, to protect the grant from, from lapsing. So these are just some of the amendments that are in the Children's Amendment Bill relating to um, kinship care for orphaned or abandoned children.